Well, this is the day, lad. I remember the first night you came to us. And look at you now. I'm still ugly. Maze's faith in you was well placed. Now come along. The graduation ceremony will take place in the Chamber of Fate, the oldest part of the guild. Yeah. Let's do it. Graduation. Let the apprentices approach. For many years now, you have worked hard to earn yourselves the title of hero. Today, that apprenticeship ends and you go out into the world to do great deeds. Deeds that will bring you the gratitude of thousands. Or strike fear into their hearts. These are dark times. The shadows of Albion are stirring and strange winds are blowing. Your choices, whether they lead you down the path of good or evil, will change the face of the world. Now, take your guild seals and venture forth as heroes. A little curious as to uh, why you guys painted pictures of me on the walls here. Am I really that important? Have I have it's I done anything for you to, to warrant that? that? Okay. But Whatever. you're still very much part of the guild. On the map table, you will find details of any quests the people of Albion wish heroes to perform. And you'll need to return often to focus all your experience into new skills. Only by doing this regularly will you advance as a hero. Step into the light, and I'll show you how to do this. We don't need to see this. Especially because the menu is all confusing as balls now. Um, alright. Let's see. We are going to be talking about our magic first. First thing we're going to not do is we're not going to be spending any points in any of these for about the first three hours of the game. Three or four, actually. Um, there is, in short an item later we can get if we don't put any points in our physical stats um, and save that until later because the normal way you get that item is by having maximum in all of your physical stats and by the point by the time you get maximum in all your physical stats that items not good for you anymore but it's amazing for you if you manage to pick it up early by foregoing any might points for the first half of the game um, and there's ways around that uh, it won't gimp us too badly but basically we're not gonna be touching this red part uh, we are going to be putting most of our points to start with in magic because we need to get our key abilities up as fast as possible uh, in heroic mode they really put uh, uh, a limit on the uh, really powerful spells like divine fury costs well, 4000 and we don't have anywhere close to that much because divine fury is a really overpowered spell uh, in contrast, stuff like multi-strike and, you know, um, that's another example. Multi-strike and, uh, Divine Fury and stuff are lower cost just because they're not as ridiculous. Not, I'm misspeaking a lot. Fireball, that's a good example. Fireball is only 500 because that's not really a broken ability at all. And we're actually not going to get that because it will be completely useless for us. Our priorities are going to be to invest as many points in slow time and physical shield as possible. Um, and we're going to be able to get slow time earlier than physical shield. So that be what we're going to do. Because those two abilities are awesome. And paired together, they're made, they freaking make you invincible and god dear. At least in the normal difficulty of the game. In Heroic, we need them kind of just to survive. <laughs> because it, the, the mob damage does go up a lot. And um, I'll demonstrate that later. But anyway, we can't really buy out any of these abilities for now. But we can... I think we can improve our magic power. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring our magic power up a little bit. Um, and then switch back to speed. We can't spend any points on speed. So magic power is all we can do. That's all we there can do. There is little else for me to teach you. But I will always be around to offer you guidance. 
and your guild seal will allow me to communicate with you at all times. You will also notice it flashing when you have enough experience to spend. I have given you a basic pack of supplies. It'll be enough for a while. Now there's a whole world for you to explore. Awesome. And we have two will potions to start off with. Will Check potions for more quests. are basically going to turn into a, into uh, health potions once we get physical chicken physical shield chicken. trained up enough. You chase chickens. Um, and the reason we have physical shield running all the time is to increase our combat multiplier. Combat multiplier is generated by hitting things and not getting hit. When you get hit, it goes down. When you hit things, it goes up. And it's a very important mechanic because the more, the higher your combat multiplier gets, the more experience you get. Um, and the key to, to staying ahead and being really overpowered in this game is to get as many points spent in your key abilities as soon as possible. So, in order to get the spells we need, we're going to be exploiting lightning a lot. Um, and whenever we have mana, we're going to blow it on trying to zap things. Not necessarily because it's the fastest way to kill stuff, it's the fastest way to level. Now, we've gone back into the guild because I need to talk to this here door. This is a demon door. Demon doors have riddles, and you can walk up... They look kind of like Ferris Lockstone doors for some reason. Sorry, Dark Souls. Um, <laughs> they have riddles for us to solve, and this one has the riddle for us. Your path is dark. Only a light will reveal it, and you are not bright enough. Now, he just called us stupid, or did he? We actually just got an item. Uh, let me find it. That's not what I wanted to see. Eh, this new menu, man. As you can see, it's a lot different from the menu in the original game. It's sort of designed to be navigatable with an Xbox controller. Pity the people that play on PC within an Xbox controller, because this is probably annoying as heck. Um, it's not very intuitive at all, to be completely honest. But we have a lamp as part of our starter kit from graduating, and we are going to turn the lamp on. And Your path is illuminated. Fancy that. You worked it out. Just like that, the door opens. And that's pretty much how we have to go through the game, solving the demon door riddles. Um, demon door riddles are really important, because they the demon doors house the best items you can get access to, and we're going to kind of be exploiting them to get really good kit without having to actually buy anything. Because solving the riddles is a lot cheaper than having to buy stuff in most cases. Also, considering we're not putting any points in physical stats, we need to get as many of these elixirs of life as possible. These elixirs of life and elixirs of mana or will, I can't remember which is which, effectively do the same as putting points in vitality or your mana pool. They um, increase your health, and for a while, this is going to be the only way we can actually increase our health, so it's important for us to find as many of them as possible early on, because otherwise we're going to have like 2 HP, and stuff will be able to 3-shot us, and that's not optimal. Also, the reason we need physical shield as quickly as possible as well. But enough bantering aside, we won't be back to the Heroes Guild, or at least back here until we get a fishing rod. And first order of business, we need to get a fishing rod and we need to get a shovel as quickly as possible in order to unearth items. The fishing rod will come from the Great Wood Woods um, and a little side quest. The shovel, I think, is something we need to buy in Bowerstone, which is the first city we're going to be going to very shortly after we do the first quest. And for quests, we have to check this little table here. The table is giving us a quest for a Wasp Menace in the picnic area infestation. 
There are three other quests here. Um, the Snow Troll Attack, Suppress Uprising, and Minion Camp. Those are impossible for us to do. We cannot actually do those because our renown is not high enough, and they are simply there to show you that you can't do those quests. There's there's no point to them. I don't think they actually exist. Um, it would be interesting to see a hacked game file and um, see how someone who exploited their like increased their renown um, using uh, exploits and cheats. Uh, what would happen if you actually took those? quests if it actually breaks the game or not because I'm not sure those quests actually exist in the game I think they're just placeholders and if you try to do them the game will break but I don't really know for sure